everyone. So LeBron James is officially ruled out for a foot injury in the upcoming game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Very likely he's probably going to miss the Thunder game. Um, I imagine he may miss several games going forward. Uh, based on a report by Shams, uh, the Lakers are prepared for him to miss an extended period of time, potentially weeks. Uh, now, obviously this is a huge blow, and this sucks. And if he misses, you know, say six weeks to recover his foot, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot, right? We're already um, in the, the 12th seed, and we're only a couple games back of even just like a playoff spot of the six seed. We're only like a game behind a play-in spot. And we really need all hands on deck. And it's just like every time we start getting ahead and things start feeling like, oh, we're heading in the right direction. Unfortunately, guys get hurt. Uh, D'Lo got hurt. You now have LeBron James. And if he misses ample time, that's really going to hurt uh, Anthony Davis. There's always that fear of like, is he the next to go down? What's going to end up happening? But in general, right? The show must go on. Guys, next man up, we got to keep it going. And I do think that this team can weather the storm while LeBron James is out. Uh, I do think that this team can rattle off multiple wins against a lot of these teams that we have coming up. Luckily, we have an easier schedule, right? If we had, you know, like the Sixers twice, the Bucks twice, the Celtics twice, Memphis twice, Denver twice, I'd be like, yeah, our, our playoff hopes are probably done. But we do have a, a much easier, smoother schedule. Uh, you know, we do play the Grizzlies. Then we play, like, the Thunder. We have games against, like, Houston. We have games against uh, the Jazz. Towards the Like, we have a lot of games that are very winnable, even without LeBron James. We have a lot of games in which that I do believe that this team can win, even without LeBron James. And we've seen them be able to win. I mean, their first game together they won without LeBron James against the Golden State Warriors. Um, and Grizzlies, I think that's going to be tough without LeBron James. But I do think we have a lot of guys that can step up, a lot of guys that can make an impact on both sides of the ball. We're going to have to play defense. We're going to have to score. We can't have these slow starts because we're not going to have LeBron James to rely on to kind of just generate buckets, put his head down, and get to the basket. Uh, but after the Grizzlies, the Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Warriors, if Steph doesn't return... All three of those games, I think, are very winnable games without LeBron James. Uh, then you have the Grizzlies again. Again, that might be a tough game. The Raptors have been playing really good basketball lately, but I do think that that's a winnable game. The Knicks, I think, is a winnable game. The Pelicans, the Rockets, uh, I think we can beat the Mavericks again if we don't have that terrible start. Uh, and then we play the Magic, and then we play the Suns. And hopefully by March 22nd when we play the Suns, hopefully LeBron is back because that would give him essentially three weeks uh, to recover and hopefully that would be enough time for him to come in. So the game stretch that we have, the next like 10 games or so that we have coming up, I do think are truly winnable without LeBron James. But again, guys that we have, the beauty of this new roster and this depth is we have guys that can step in and play and provide a lot of what LeBron is going to do. You're never going to replace LeBron. <laughs> You're never going to replicate the things that Bron does. But... What you can do is you can through committee. Guys stepping up, right? Rui Hachimura. I really think Rui Hachimura is a guy that can come in. I think he's a guy that can step up and play that role. He's a guy that we know he can go get you a 20, right? Run some plays for this guy. I've been saying this for a while. Get this guy. This guy is money in the mid-range. Operate and run some sets for him. And I really do think he could get you 15 to 20 a game, right? And then with him... Uh, D'Lo, right? We'll, we'll wait and see what happens to him. Uh, he's a guy that is currently uh, being listed as doubtful, but even it, without him, we've seen Dennis Schroeder step up and have big games without LeBron James, without Anthony Davis, right? That could be big. Beasley, we've seen Beasley could get hot. He needs to start hitting shots. He needs to get together. Vanderbilt, I really think uh, a front court of Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt, and Anthony Davis is more than enough to, to make up for the lack of what we're going to be missing with LeBron James. I think that front court still has the same size, still has a lot of the same strengths. Uh, Rui gives you the scoring that you could need. Anthony Davis is going to have to be, uh, you know, a monster Anthony Davis. We can't have those, those games where he's just kind of lackadaisical out there. Now, 
I'm not saying he has to give you 30, right? If Rui is hot, he's giving you 25, and Schroeder is killing it, and you have Beasley giving you 25, and Anthony Davis just has to play defense, control the paint. No, like the, like the Warriors game, right? Like, we didn't have LeBron. Anthony Davis only had, like, what, 13 points and 12 rebounds or something like that, but he controlled the paint. He was great defensively, and we won the game because everyone else stepped up. If that can happen again, then that's fine. But there are going to be games, especially the Grizzlies. We're going to have to get him established early. We're going to have to get him going. Uh, Operate plays, keep sharing the ball. We've been really, really good with sharing the ball uh, with this Lakers team. Really good, right? And that needs to continue. We have to continue to move the ball, keep defenses honest, keep defenses from uh, just being able to, to... just have easy closeout, easy possessions. We can't have, again, you move the ball, it makes things a lot more difficult. And that's what we have to continue to do. Uh, Lakers are averaging roughly 30 assists per game. They had 25 in the Dallas game. So again, they're really doing their part. I think Rui can come in. He's better suited at the four anyway. The Lakers have had Rui play the three spot a lot this year uh, because he's a sizable wing. And at this point in LeBron's career, he's best at the four. So in games where you started Rui, it was okay. It's like, well, we can't move LeBron to the three because he's best at the four with his age and stuff and guys that he has to defend. Let's put him there. Well, now Rui, he gets to go and guard the bigger fours, which I think he'll be able to do. I really do. I think he's he's been a solid defender. He's not like a great lockdown. He's not Jared Vanderbilt out there, right? But he is good enough to hold his own. He's got the size. He can't be pushed around. And that is good. He can come in with him, Anthony Davis patrolling the paint, uh, you know, the Vandalorian or whatever you want to call him, uh, being the guy to to go and uh, just kind of be the, the hey, who's the best player tonight? That's who I'm guarding. Let me be the help defender. Let me be the switch defender. Let me do whatever I have to do, right? Uh, you know, Anthony Davis is going to be able to match up and he should be able to dominate uh, this, this Grizzlies team. Should be able to play well. Um, you know, if depending on if they go uh, Jared Jackson or if they go Steven Adams, whatever, they have Jackson at the four. I think Rui can match up with him. I think he's got the size and the strength to, to Bane with him. I think that that'll be a good matchup. I think Rui can go and get you 15 to 20. It's going to have to be a collective by the team, right? Everyone's going to have to play their role. Everyone's going to have to step up. We can't have a Dallas game. If guys just play well, like we have, we've seen these guys play. If they play well, then I definitely think that we can win these games. Now, obviously, if we lose the Memphis game, it'll suck. But it's not as bad as if we lose to, like, the Thunder, right? Like, we need to, we have to beat the teams in front of us. That's the big thing. Right. And yes, the Grizzlies are in front of us technically, but we're not going to chase the Grizzlies. We're not going to catch the Grizzlies. But the Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Warriors, the Pelicans, those are the teams we have to have to beat. We have to stay. We have to stay that full game ahead by beating those teams. And the only way we're going to do that is if we have collective, you know, through through committee. Right. We still we have 21 games left. Right. We are three games out of 500 right now. I think that this team still has enough firepower, has an easy enough schedule, has enough talent to get into at least the play in, even if LeBron James misses the rest of the season. Now, hopefully he's healthy and ready to go come playoffs, but even if, you know, knock on wood, he misses he does miss extended time. He does miss, you know, 3 to 4 weeks or something like that. He misses a month, whatever. I do believe that this team is still talented enough to get into at least the play-in. And I do think they could still get into the 7th or 8th seed. I think this team has more than enough talent. I think Rui Hachimura is a guy that can really step up and provide some of the scoring load. But you have to call his number, right? He can't. Like, right now, he's getting his points basically on just, you know, broken plays, uh, rebounds, putbacks, and just or the ball just kind of landing in his lap. We're not running any offense for Rui Hachimura, which frustrates me because he's a guy that can go and get a bucket. The guy has the size. He has the strength. He has the shooting ability to go get a bucket. I would love to see them call his number and run some plays with him and just allow him to have an opportunity. What do you have to lose? You don't have LeBron James, right? 
So why not call a couple plays and see if he can get hot? Build his confidence. Get him going, especially if you're concerned LeBron James is going to miss ample time because you're going to need Rui to step up huge. You're going to need Rui to be that guy to kind of step in and handle some of the scoring loads, some of the burden. Again, you're never going to replace LeBron James. You're never going to be able to replicate LeBron James. But what you can do is you can have guys like Rui come in and give you 15 to 20 a night. There's, you know, half or three-fourths of LeBron scoring. So there you go. Now you have some help from scoring. Now if Schroeder, can he bump up a little bit on his end? You know, Anthony Davis, can he go and get his points and control the paint? We're going to need Jared Vanderbilt. Can he go get us, you know, 10 points per game, right? Instead of, uh, you know, he's averaging like six or seven right now. Can he go bump up? Now, you just get everybody to start bumping up, you know, one or two or three points. And then you get a guy like Rui going who can go get you 15 to 20, all of a sudden, you've at least replaced LeBron's scoring. This team is already sharing the ball, right? So that's good. So you you can keep the, the assist totals high. Keep the, the offense free-flowing, right? Especially without LeBron, it makes it easier to have the offense be free-flowing because the, Le, the LeBron has the ball stick at times. He is a great playmaker, great passer, but we see all the time. He has the ball, he dribbles, 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 run down the clock, and then he makes his decision. Right. Well, instead, the way you replicate LeBron's playmaking is the fast pace, free flowing. The ball is constantly swinging from side to side. You're running slants. You're running screens. You're, you're running all these different motions. And it starts putting pressure on the defense to generate easy buckets. So now you've replaced the, sh- the scoring. You've replaced the playmaking. And defensively, like LeBron has been solid defensively, but he's not what he was as a spring chicken. Rui can provide, I believe, some of that defense, if not a good chunk of it. So all of a sudden, you've replaced a lot of what LeBron is. Again, his impact, there's a lot of other factors that go into it, right? But in general, it's just about, you know, can we start, you know, LeBron averages 27 points or whatever, right? Okay, well, how do we get that? How do we get that point total? Well, Rui could get you half of it. So now we just need other guys to step up and give you, you know, bump up their point total a couple points. Boom, now you got the points. How do we replicate his 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 playmaking ability and his passing ability? Ball doesn't stick. Everybody keep sharing, sharing. Move, 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 move. Run all these motions, all that stuff. Boom, now we've replicated his playmaking. You can start to kind of replace some of the issues that we have. Still got to play great defense, which I do believe we can, right? We're going to have our hands full with the Grizzlies, but I do believe that we can do it and we can step up. It's gonna, We're going to need a lot. It's all hands on deck. We're going to have to have a collective effort, but that's why you have this depth. It's why you have this team. And then D'Angelo Russell, very likely my guess personally, although I would love to have him return for the Grizzlies, um, my guess is is that he probably sits the Grizzlies game and then comes back for the Thunder game. Because the Lakers know the Thunder game is a lot more important than the Memphis Grizzly game. So I think, precaution-wise, they probably sit D'Lo for the Memphis game. Don't want him to have to run on a back-to-back after the sprained ankle and make things worse. So I think we don't have D'Lo for the Grizzly game, but I do think D'Lo will be back for the Thunder game. Um, But we'll see. Time will tell. I'm not saying that like, oh, lock it in, D'Lo's coming back. It's just sort of my thoughts. Sit sit him for the Grizzly game, bring him back for the Thunder game, and now you got kind of that that spark now. It's like, all right, D'Lo's back. You know, we're, 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 we're almost full strength. We're just missing LeBron. But, hey, D'Lo, again, he can replicate the playmaking. He can replicate the scoring. Uh, he can replicate a lot of the things that LeBron provides. So now you got that other option. So I think... However you look at it, however you slice it, I do think that we will be okay. I do think that we can still get it done. Are we going to lose more games than we uh, would have otherwise? Probably. Probably. You know, like I was saying, we pro- we need to, like, I think we go 16 and 5, maybe at worst, uh, you know, 15 and 6 the rest of the way. Now I lean towards, like, we're probably, hopefully best case, we're like, 14 and 7. Um, but realistically, we're probably like 13 and 8, 12 and 9, um, which isn't good, <laughs> which is not what you want. Because that again, 
at 12 and 9, that would basically put you at 500. But I do believe 500 is enough to get into the play. I think if we could get at least a 500, um, I do believe that we're probably in that 7th, 8th seed. Uh, so I do think that that's best case scenario. And again, it's why you got all this depth. That's why you went and made these trades. That's why you got all this talent. That's why you got a sharpshooter and and uh, Beasley. That's why you got D'Lo when he comes back. Uh, Lonnie Walker. So many people want to see Lonnie Walker play. Well, we're going to need some scoring. Lonnie Walker, you're in. Let's get some scoring. Right? We're really going to need all these guys to step up. Austin Reeves, we know he can step up. We know he loves the moment. We know he ain't scared. He ain't shy. Right? So... I expect big games out of him. I expect a big game out of Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder has shown. I mean, most of the big games Dennis Schroeder has had have been without LeBron James or without Anthony Davis. So he's a guy that I really do expect to really pick it up and step up with LeBron out. Him saying, okay, I need to take on a bigger role. And I'm fine with that. As long as he's, you know, doing that and he's doing a good job with it. But we have the depth, we have the talent, we have the size still. That's the beauty. We still have the size. We have Rui Hachimura, we have Jared Vanderbilt. So we can go those two with Anthony Davis and we don't lose any size. We might be a little smaller in the in the second unit, but you can also scatter those guys to, to kind of make up for it, right? So Rui, now he could, you know, he could start. Maybe you take Rui out and move Jared Vanderbilt to the four at the five minute mark. Maybe bring Troy Brown in. So Troy Brown could guard the three. So you have Troy Brown at the three, uh, eighty at the at the four or at the five, and then Vanderbilt at the at the uh, four, whatever. Or very likely, I could see um, maybe Troy Brown starting. I personally would prefer Rui starting. Keep Vanderbilt at the three. Keep AD at the five. Keep that structure, right? Bring Rui in at the four. I hope that that's what Darvin Ham does. But even if you don't, even if you go Troy Brown, Vando, LeBron, or, uh, Anthony Davis, then Rui can come in and you can just scatter their minutes to where you always have one of those two in. Uh, you got Mo Bamba now. I think Mo Bamba will match up a lot better against the Grizzlies than he did against the Dallas Mavericks because Dallas just loves to just jack up threes and pull guys out and they were going small and all that stuff. I do think that this will be a better matchup for him. I think this team will be okay. But anyway, again, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think we'll be fine? Do you think we're not? Is it panic mode? Is not? How do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below.